So last Monday, um, I watched a new music video released by the Jewish a cappella group called the Maccabees. It was filmed on the steps uh, of the Lincoln Memorial in honor of Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech that was given there in the summer of 1963. They sang an inspiring rendition of James, James Taylor's song, Shed a Little Light, and it was in collaboration with an equally talented African-American a cappella group called Naturally Seven. A link to the video is in the description box, and I strongly encourage you to watch it. So that night, um, I awoke to the words, we shall have a dream, a different dream, not like the other dream. Okay, let's begin to understand what is being shown here. She's the group, the Maccabees, which is a reference to a, de a feast of dedication. The song, Shed a Little Light, is what Father wants us all to see is the light of truth. And what specific truth is being shown here? The name of the other group that joined the Maccabees is Naturally Seven. He wants the natural order that he put in place with Creation Week, showing the true order of the week with the true seventh day. So Penny's dream is referring to more than one person. The we shall have a dream. We shall be shown something. That's what dreams are, being shown something. A different dream, not like the other dream. What's the other dream? It's the lie that we've inherited from our forefathers. So this brings in the next clips of the dreams that Rhonda has had and what Father is leading us to see. Now in this dream on January 4th, I was sitting in a room and I was in a rocky chair and I know that I was speaking with the Holy Spirit. I did not see her or him, but the Holy Spirit came to me as my mother, but I knew in the dream that it was the Holy Spirit that I was speaking with and I didn't feel very well in this past week and that's exactly what's been happening so last couple of weeks I've been just very sick you know what I mean just haven't been feeling good very tired and this is exactly how it was in the dream so it was very realistic to me and I told the Holy Spirit I said we have less than a week before Christmas will you please take me to the store so that I can make sure I have everything I need Interpreting this dream, Rhonda is seeing her mother on Monday, Monday morning. Monday is symbolically the first bride. And how, how do we see that? We see this in Genesis 37.10, that the moon is representation of Joseph's mother. Rhonda is also feeling sick because she has less than the week. She doesn't have the true week. She's sick in her dream with the false week. January 5th. I was with a doctor who in many of my dreams has always represented the Lord. In this dream, I was with him and there was many of us, some including uh, my, my son, okay, and some family members. We were in a hallway and he was walking us down this hallway. And a hallway I know represents a transition. When we walked through the hallway, we ended up and he took us into an auditorium where a play was being performed. A play represents the game of life, okay? Basically what we're doing here is just, that's what that represents. So we were reenacting this play and I asked him, I said, do I have to do my part? And he said, no, all I want you to do now is dance. Dancing is worship, rejoicing, having joy, okay? So that's what happened in that scene. Now, since then, like I said to you guys, I wasn't sure what this week represented. I know in Daniel, a week represents seven years. So I was like, oh, wow, okay, Lord, are you showing me that we still have seven years left? You know, maybe in the last seven years. This is what I was stuck on and why I did not want to do a video, okay? So I waited, and I even asked a friend to pray with me on this. But other than that, I just kept it between me and God and just praying for revelation. You know, Lord, is this what you're showing me, or, or does this week just represent... Um, uh, uh, a period of time. All right, so what? Rhonda's dream on Tuesday, she sees the doctor. This is a representation of Michael the Archangel, one who comes with healing in his wings. Tuesday is symbolically Michael's day. He sits at the right side of uh, the hand of the Father. This 
hallway that he leads you into is a transition. It's a transition from the last day of the work week into the Sabbath of Wednesday. Uh, this is a play of life that we are all le uh, leading, and the whole dancing part is about worship. Dancing is following a pattern, a pattern of footsteps. We are to walk in his footsteps. And part of that is walking in the true order of the week, resting on the true Sabbath of Wednesday. What happened uh, last night with this dream uh, showed me that, uh, kind of gave me the answer to those questions. Okay. So in this dream that I had last night, the first thing I saw written across or written above my head was the word easel. Now I had wrote it out, but I spelled it wrong. I heard a voice. I did not see this person, but he pointed to the, the one of the letters and said I spelt it wrong. And I kind of laughed in my dream and I said, yes, I did. So I went and corrected the word and it, so it spelled easel. So afterwards I'm thinking, what, why would I write the word easel? I mean, that's a, like a tripod, uh, artist use it. Rhonda is now dreaming on Wednesday, about Wednesday, about the Sabbath, uh, and she's seeing the word easel, but it's spelled wrong. So we are to look at the letters in easel and see that there's another word there. And the word is seal, or if we throw in an E, D, um, we have sealed. It is the Sabbath that is the seal of Father. We are in covenant with Him when we have the uh, Sabbath in our life. In this dream, I knew something was coming next Monday. Now, you guys, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I'm going to just tell you what I saw. In this dream, I knew that it was Wednesday, just as it is today. And I was in, in the dream, in my mind, I was counting. And I said that I could not wait for Monday. Something was coming Monday. So either January 11th or 12th, I'm expecting something because I was very excited about it. Now in the next scene, I was on a business trip with an actor. His name is Stephen Carell. He used to play Michael on The Office. It's a comedy uh, series that was out. So I was on this business trip with him, and I was just his helper. Now, he was dressed in a beautiful white robe, you guys, beautiful. And in this dream, we were in, a, like, a hotel room, you know, where we were staying for this business trip. And I said to him, I said, I am so excited that we are able to go home today. And I said, what time do we get to leave? And he said, 1 o'clock. Rhonda now sees on her Wednesday morning dream that it's Wednesday in her dream. And then... It's actually Wednesday in reality as she's doing this video the same day. Father's doubly confirming the importance of this day in all these dreams. No other day is mentioned as Wednesday is, and it is confirmed with it being the same day. Um, she does know that something is coming the following Monday, which we'll get to. Um, she sees uh, Stephen Carroll, and she says, he played the character Michael. So again, uh, this is Michael who is with the Father uh, before the Ark of the Covenant uh, in in the, the one that's in heaven. We are to be in the same place. This is the home that she's talking about that we are to go to. Father's home is his Sabbath. Break down the word. Shah, Abba, Beth. Beth is house or home. Shah is uh, saving or savior. Abba is our father. So this is what is being referred to. The Sabbath is father, the house of the saving father, um, our creator. And this is what he's given us to have a relationship with him so we can come to be home with him. So anyways, I told him, I said, I'm very glad that we get to go home today. All right. So in the next scene, that scene was confirmed because then I was shown on a video the same thing that had just happened in that scene. It was just, it was kind of weird. Like it was repeated twice in the stream. So then in the next scene, I was at a place like maybe an office party. I was with other people that I worked with. 
before I left, I told everybody, I said, I hope you guys have a great Christmas. Merry Christmas. So again, obviously Christmas is over with. So like I said before, this is pertaining to the return of Christ. This is showing us how close it is to him coming. So again, I told everybody, Merry Christmas. In another scene, I bought 10 cake mixes. Now, cakes represent divine food, and I got this out of Jeremiah 7, 18. Okay, now the last part of this dream, I walked into a room, and I had a bowl of cookie dough. And my Aunt Lori was sitting there, and she goes, did you decide what you were going to do with yours? And I said, it was blue. I said, oh, I dyed the cookie dough blue. I decided to make sugar cookies in honor of the military. Okay, so... With this next part, Ron is now being warned by Father about the false Sabbath. She goes to an office party of the world. It's representing the worlds. Uh, the fact that it has the false false feast of at Christmas, uh, and they are looking for this false Messiah to return. Uh, it is ten cakes that she makes, uh, which it's very appropriate that she um, quotes from Jeremiah seven eighteen. I'll, I'll, I'll quote that in a second. Ten cakes are a representation of the tenth day. Saturday is the tenth day. If Wednesday is the seventh day, you keep counting. Saturday is the tenth day. The whole chapter seven of Jeremiah is about the false practices, the false worship, the worship of other gods by keeping false Sabbaths uh, and the things they do for their other gods. Quoting from verse 18, uh, the children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire and the women knead their dough as she was having with the dough to make cookies um, to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. So you can see this is ref referring to a false Sabbath. Uh, cakes and dough have leavening in them. They are corrupted. Um, the military that she is offering this to is the, all I can think of is the Christian soldiers. Uh, Father is not looking for Christian soldiers. He is looking for people who follow the truth, and there's nothing about fighting for, with him. He takes care of everything for us. The photo that's in the background while I'm talking here is uh, a captured picture of comments that I left on Rhonda's video from Wednesday, January 6th, showing that I predicted that if Father w was involved with this and giving her these things, then the next night she would have a dream that would pertain to Gabriel, and if Father continued this, Friday she would have a dream showing the second bride. See what happens. I'll show you what I saw last night in a dream. I thought it was pretty interesting. I hope you guys can see this okay. Um, real quick, it was just really fast. I mean, I there were some other scenes in, in, that I had last night, but the main thing was is I was in a room with some other people, and I was just reading a book and hanging out, and it was uh, some of my classmates. And then one of my classmates, whose name is Devin, walked in with a really long trumpet like this. Now, he came in blowing it. All right? I was just trying to get some different pictures here so you can see. It was like an old-fashioned, really long trumpet. So he was standing with his profile towards me, and this is what it looked like. This is what the trumpet looked like, real big like that. So that's it, you guys. That's all that happened. I just thought I would... Uh, I wanted to make a quick video of it to show you. This dream was a very clear statement from Father that he was fulfilling the prediction that he allowed me to see what her dream would be the next night, and it would pertain to Gabriel. Um, and how does Devon fit in there? Uh, she says Devon equals poet, but in my research, Devon comes from, uh, it's a nickname for divine, one who is divinely um, and there's no other divine trumpeter but uh, Archangel Gabriel. Um, 
I've never had this happen to me before where I could predict what someone was going to dream on the next night. Uh, one, to say that they're going to dream to begin with, uh, that's half the battle. And second, that it would actually be a dream about what I am telling them it would be. Uh, only in scripture do you see anything similar. And with that, it's Daniel interpreting a uh, a dream that he doesn't know that had already happened so he had to get divine direction in order to know what the dream was and then to give the prediction uh, this is a little beyond that <laughs> I'm something that hasn't happened yet has to happen so it'd be interesting to see if father does the same thing then with uh, Friday does Rhonda get a dream on Friday we shall see Okay, the first dream was I had it on Friday, um, January 8th, which was yesterday, okay? Now, in this dream, I wore, in the one scene, I wore a vest. I wore this vest, I think, for a long time. And I really loved this vest. And at the end of the scene, I told my mom she could wear it. So I gave it to her. And then um, I saw the girl that works for me, JC which it just hit me this morning as I was going over this dream that JC again I think represents Jesus Christ okay so in this dream like I said I had this vest I loved it I wore it for a long time but then I told my mom that she could wear it and then I looked at JC and said don't worry I'll make sure it's washed and cleaned before I give it back to you because it was originally hers it was originally JC's vest okay and then as I left I showed JC another vest that I had it was a a long blue vest and it was really pretty and I loved it for some reason I just loved these vests and I don't ever wear them you guys so Rhonda does indeed have another dream on Friday the first uh, dream she has is uh, with this vest being transferred to this woman JC um, in there she sees her mother with which is referenced back to her Monday dream with her mother being in that dream um, being a reference to the first bride the first bride had been given a vest and now also the second bride this JC is being given a, a vest what does a vest have to do with anything it's not a piece of clothing these are symbolic things in dreams the vest if you look up the word <clears throat> Uh, one of the definitions is the legal right or power to do something. This is exactly what the bride does. The bride follows through in the truth that is given to her, being a blessing to her husband. Uh, just look at Psalm uh, 31, uh, Proverbs 31, sorry. <clears throat> um, so Monday is a picture of the first bride with her mother. Friday is a picture of the second bride. Uh, Friday is the only um, very clearly uh, named day. It's, it's a pagan god's name, but it is female. Uh, moon is sort of hidden. You have to find that from scripture, as I already talked about. Um, second thing is that Friday is the, the Tamar, the Esther, the hidden bride. So he has uh, brought about the second prediction that she would again dream on Friday and she would dream something about the second bride because this is the pattern. These are what uh, the days of the week represent on a spiritual level uh, with Wednesday being the true Sabbath. She's being shown the true Sabbath and this is what the brides are shown. Uh, the first bride is the Leah. The second bride is the Rachel. <clears throat> uh, the second bride um, has greater vision, and she must have greater vision, because she doesn't have the, the anointed, the witnesses present as the first bride did. So they have to um, have incredible insight to look through scripture to look at the lies that we've been handed down that they've put in scripture that they have put in the traditions to find the truth and this is what the bride is doing 
um, I'll probably need some help with too. Now, as you guys know that my brother Ted, you know, he passed away years ago. I talk about him often. Now, in this dream, I was shown that he had uh, gone into a hospital because he was sick, right? Um, but something about this place was being covered up. I knew they weren't telling me the truth of what really happened. Um, but then I was handed a t-shirt of his. So that was my proof that he really was there because they were trying to tell me that he wasn't really there. But I knew he was. I know this may sound confusing, but something had happened to him and uh, this place that he was in, which I, I think it was a hospital, they were covering it up. They were trying to hide something. But then somebody said, here, this is his t-shirt to prove to you that he really was here. And it was a white t-shirt. So actually the name, the meaning of the name Ted is gift and a t-shirt as we know, or a shirt is a covering. Okay. And it was a white t-shirt. Now in the next scene, um, I saw that I was with my brother-in-law again, Marty. We talked about this before. Marty, uh, his name represents of Mars. Okay. Now I was with him in this place and there was all this flooding. Now, as he watched this happen, okay, it was like he suddenly knew, okay, this is of God. There was a very important scene that, um, that it was the fact that I knew that this represented something important. And I also knew that it was about Jesus. I just knew it. And Marty that was with me, it was like his eyes finally opened up and he realized too, okay, you know, what you've been saying, this is true. So he got in his car and it was like he was testing to see how deep the water was. And I was in the car with him and we only went out so far and then turned around. Um, and so the water was uh, deeper than the car uh, because when it, well, it got up to the top because when it got too far, he turned around and went back. And then I got out and I was actually standing in the water and it came up to probably about my waist. But it was a whole flooded area. And I know that that represents judgment or an attack. So again, I think the Lord is showing us, okay, um, that as we all know, judgment is coming, you guys, okay? So the next part of her dreams on Friday are about the truth being covered up, the truth being hidden, the Ted being a gift and the white t-shirt being a covering is the gift of the covering, the covering of Father's Sabbath. Again, it's that which will protect us uh, in Revelation. It is the seal. We are sealed with the Sabbath, and we are protected. Uh, Marty is derived from Martin, which is a reference to the Roman god Mars, uh, the god of war. Uh, the god of war is not able to overcome the flood of truth that is about to come about and all their falsehoods will be uh, shown. And then last night's dream kind of goes along with this. You guys, it's like the Lord is just giving us messages here and showing us what's coming and what we need to do. Now in this dream, Keith Urban was in this dream with me and I was pregnant. I was probably eight months pregnant. I was almost ready to have this baby. And I gave him some apple pie. Now, I ate my piece of apple pie, and I told him, I said, this is my favorite pie. I love it. But he didn't really care for it. He didn't really like it. Now, the meaning of the name Keith is wood. Now, you guys know that I dreamt of that lady that was made all of wood. So I kind of made a connection there with those two, that these are people that may be hardened or... Um, I'm trying to remember what we all talked about in that part with the, the lady that was wooden with the wooden fingers. But the fact was, is he didn't care for the fruit, okay? He didn't like that. And anyway, so then in the next scene, after we ate the pie, and I told him how much I liked it, we were just sitting there when all of a sudden this man came in and said, there's 15 men coming over and I need you to feed them eggs and coffee. Now, Keith got upset because he was like all frazzled and stressed out. He didn't know what to do and he was like frantic and he laughed. But I knew what I had to do. So I got busy. I started taking coffee cups out of the cupboards, counting them out, 15 coffee cups. Um, and I started getting a frying pan out to make eggs. I needed to feed these people, okay? So, and also my youngest, or my oldest son, Brian uh, Theodore, was with me, which was really cool. He was helping me um, get the stove 
uh, lid up and stuff so that we could start cooking. And then during this time, Keith came back in again, all kind of frazzled. And I said, you don't even don't even need to worry about it. I got it all taken care of. And I told him, I said, you know, back in the old days, we used to do this stuff all the time. You know, when somebody needed fed or whatever, we just fed them. That was our job. OK, because when this man came in, that was my job. He said, there's 15 men and I need you to do it right now. They're coming over. So what I found out was 15 represents deliverance, grace, freedom, and rest. Now, coffee just means that somebody needs to wake up. Because what does coffee do? Why do we drink it? It wakes us up. It's, it gets us going in the morning. Eggs represent something new that's arriving. Okay? Same with being pregnant. Okay? Pregnancy app is represents in the process anticipation and expectancy it can also represent labor pains and trials something that's coming okay so what this dream these dreams are telling me is he's telling is talking about this coming judgment okay he's just using little different scenarios in these dreams um that the that something is definitely coming and he's telling us that we need to get people prepared this is exactly what i was doing i was feeding them and I was giving them coffee and eggs. Those are the only two things that I was asked to make for these guys. And it was for exactly 15 people. And the pregnancy, I believe, represented the fact of how urgent this is. Because I was due at any time. Okay? So, and it was, and it was very urgent in this dream where he said, you need to do this, do it right now. And I got right up and I got busy. So, this is telling me, you guys, that we really need... To know that we are in a very urgent time right now, okay? We need to get out there and get waking people up. And we need to get feeding them, okay? Um, because this baby was due any time, alright? I hope that you guys understand what, I, what I'm trying to explain. I pray that this encourages you guys, okay? And I just want to go through here and make sure that I got everything. Oh, and of course, apple is our, is the fruit, okay? Oh, and another crazy thing is also last night, my husband and I both had the same dream. Now, my husband doesn't dream very often. When he does, I know it's usually something very important from the Lord. We both dreamed that we were driving on an icy road. So this is telling me that there's going to be some dangerous times coming up, okay? And this all coincides with what the Lord is, is showing me in these dreams, okay? He was in a vehicle driving it and he had a really hard time because the roads were icy and but he did get us home safely and in my dream we were both in this well he because I was with him in the in his dream we, I, he was driving and I was in the passenger seat and then in my dream he was driving and I was in the passenger seat and then he had to get out so I had to drive us home and the roads were really icy but I saw a lot of bright light coming towards me. Um, it was snowing, and I just remember going really slow because it was really slippery out. So I thought that was really odd, you guys, that we both had the exact same dream. Keith is a Scottish nobleman. Urban is city dweller. So this is a noble city dweller, a reference to one from the kingdom, Father's kingdom. The apple is a reference to the story in Genesis. It's the forbidden fruit. He will not partake of the forbidden fruit which is a false Sabbath. The sin in Eden was the partaking of a false Sabbath. Why is it 15 men then that she sees? I'll have a link to the song, 15 men and a bottle of rum. It is the rum, the falsehood, the, you know, we are drunk with the false lies, the traditions of our fathers that leads us astray, leads us into the corrupt way of life. We need to wake up. We need to get the coffee to become sober to realize these things. Um, something new is coming, as she pointed out. The truth. We've had nothing but lies. The truth is now being being revealed. And this is of utmost urgency. This is why Father is giving this through both Barbara, sorry, through both uh, Rhonda and <clears throat> Penny. This is the hard, cold truth, which to those who have believed in falsehood, they won't know how to get through the icy roads because it is the cold truth so we need to wake up and pay attention so that night um, i awoke to the words we shall have a dream a different dream not like the other dream it is um, monday january 11th and i have a very 
very urgent vision I need to share with you guys. And um, I'm going to ask everybody for prayer over this, okay? Now, I haven't had a vision in a long, long time. Maybe this is what the Lord was showing me uh, last week when I couldn't wait for Monday. I don't know. I... I probably should take more time to really pray on a time frame here, you guys, but I just feel it's urgent to get this out for prayer, okay? So like I said, you guys know I dream. The Lord shows me things, okay? But I haven't had a vision in a long, long time. Now, sometime in the middle of the night, I woke up. I don't know what time it was because I can't see the clock from my side of the bed. But for some reason, I was awakened, and then I was shown this vision, okay? And like I said, I was awake. And this, this vision appeared before me, okay? What I saw was a huge mountain. And there was lightning striking all around this mountain. And I just knew that this was the mountain of God. This represented God's kingdom. You know, just like Moses when he came down off the mountain. And, and, or when he was on the mountain and there was lightning. That was the, the presence of the Lord. So I saw this huge mountain and it was just lightning shooting out everywhere. And then the scene went to, then it changed, and I saw the Statue of Liberty. And before that Statue of Liberty, I saw an eye, and it was not a human eye, you guys. This was God's eye in front of the um, uh, Statue of Liberty. Now, it looked like fireworks going off, but instead of the fireworks going up, the fireworks were raining down, okay? So they were raining down off this mountain, on to New York City, okay? So this is what I saw, and it really, um, I don't know, this morning I just got butterflies in my stomach. I know a lot of people are going to be asking questions of when, and I've been praying on a time frame. I feel it's going to be the result of something. That's what I've gotten in my spirit is I feel like this is going to be the result of something, and I don't know what this something is. I feel this is soon, okay, just from what, you know, uh, what I've been feeling in my spirit. Um, as you guys know, I talk to the Lord all the time. And when I talked to him last night about today, because I was a little bit excited and nervous to see what today was going to bring, he said that it would be something that would affect everybody. It's, so in other words, because I said, is it going to be just something for me or is it going to be something that every will affect everybody? And I felt that he said everybody. So Rhonda has a vision on the same day that Penny had the dream message, we shall have a dream not like the other dream. Well, the vision is totally not like what we've had. <clears throat> Rhonda sees this mountain with the lightning coming down. Uh, it is the kingdom of truth, uh, Father's kingdom. It's the fa Father is truth. His eye is beholding New York City. New York is the apple. So it's a reference to the apple of his eye. And we are the apple of his eye. And we have been corrupted by what the Statue of Liberty is symbolic of. Uh, the bloodline of Cain, of Zeus, of that survived a f flood through Nama, uh, who was known world history as uh, the goddess Athena, um, Isis, various different names. <clears throat> so the fireworks are coming down upon Statue of Liberty. It is the same fireworks that are shown in Acts. It is the fire that comes down to burn away the tares. It burns away the false lies. Well, lies are, are false to begin with. Father will burn the falsehoods. It is that time, the 120 jubilees time is up. He will not allow the false ways of man to prevail so that deception uh, can overtake people as it has. The true Sabbath <clears throat> will affect everyone. This is what Rhonda is seeing, that what is happening is not just for her, it is for everyone. When the truth comes out of just how, how incredibly deceived the whole world is, and how 
other men have done this <clears throat> will be astonished. But it is part of the process in setting up the kingdom. January 16th, yesterday, just before waking, I had a dream where I was numbering a word in my Sefer that appeared three times in the same paragraph, and then I drew lines connecting them. The word was Norman, and it looked like this. In the dream, I understood that Norman is a cow. And upon waking, I asked Yahuwah, why are you showing me a cow named Norman? The simple two word answer I received was sacred cow. So according to Wikipedia, the idiom sacred cow is a figure of speech for something one considers to be immune from question or criticism. Now Penny is putting up her dream that she had on January 16th, a Saturday, which is the false Sabbath. And this is Penny's sacred cow. I have talked with her over the, well, back in 2012, letting her know what I was finding out about the false Sabbath. She didn't want to hear it at that time and still doesn't. This is her sacred cow. She will not question the tradition of Judaism. The triangle she presents with the three Normans are showing the three pilgrim festivals Unleavened Bread, In Gathering, and Feast of Dedication. They each have a week-long uh, celebration with it, one Sabbath to another Sabbath. This is part of understanding the seven-pointed star, the Star of Dean, uh, that has been shown this year to us. We are four weeks away from the next feast day, the Feast of Passover, and Father has been showing us the importance, the urgency involved here with action that it appears he will be taking at this time. Time will tell and we'll see. I'll continue to follow in his footsteps and do the dance that he has given to us, giving him the worship he desires. Blessings to all.